Well, good afternoon and welcome to SFC Without Walls, the church podcast here. And uh, my name is Daniel. I'm the associate pastor. And today I'm joined by my regular co-host, uh, the senior pastor here. Hi, everybody. I'm Brandon. Brandon. Yeah. And we have a special guest today. We get an opportunity to be joined uh, by Mr. Paul Blancher. Paul, do you want to I'm here. briefly introduce yourself? Pastor Paul Blancher. Pastor Paul Blancher. The man, the myth, the legend. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm Paul. <laughs> uh, I'm Paul Blancher, and uh, I like being here. Yeah, and the crowd goes wild. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, such crowd as we have. Um, yeah, we've got uh, a, a big priority. It's one of the things that I love, Brandon, about you and your leadership. And like one of the very first weeks you got here, we sat down and you talked about having a priority for having uh, like a variety of teachers, you know, at the weekend services. And so this Christmas season, Paul got an opportunity to share at the weekend service, and he did yeah. a great job. And so we wanted to follow up and have him on the podcast with us and kind of continue the conversation. Yeah, it's always so. good to have the person who spoke, because yeah. we've done several times where, you know, maybe Pastor Tony spoke, and then he couldn't be there for the podcast. So it was kind of, it's like, oh, what do we do? Or right. now we have someone who's not one of the, the people who have spoken um, probably the majority of the time. But yeah. yeah, we love having Paul with us today. So thanks for joining us, well, Paul. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So yeah, this last weekend, uh, Pastor Paul got a chance to to speak on the topic of love. And so, um, yeah, he did a great job. If you haven't had a chance to listen to it, it'll be posted on our YouTube page. Also, you can find it on Facebook and listen there. But Paul did a great job talking about that. We usually like to start the segment by basically going beyond Sunday. So mm -hmm. it's no longer Sunday. And so let's, let's try to take what we learned from Sunday and apply it to our lives. And the first question we like to ask is what stood out to you? So Daniel, I'm going to ask you first, what stood out to you? from this week's um, sure. message? I, I think the thing that stood out to me the most was um, the quote that you shared, and I'm forgetting the guy's name now. He was the one who wrote, the gentleman who wrote uh, Oh Little Town of Bethlehem. Whatever oh, yeah. that guy's, whatever that guy's name is, he Phillips was Edwards, actually. something like that. Yeah. Yes, and he was a, a pastor in the late 1800s, and uh, you had a quote from him about love and about the impact of grace on us, and it went with the part of your message where you were talking about, you know, we are we're called to love and not to like predicate our love for people based on their deservingness of it or their right. worth of right. it, you know, but to just start from the perspective of love. And the, and the quote was about that. It was, uh, the gist of the quote was like, as we understand the grace of God, it should increase our ability to extend that grace to the people around us and to sort of drop some of those barriers that would say, oh, I'm not yep. going to extend grace to this person because X, Y, and Z in their life, yep. you know, would cause me to withhold it or whatever. And, and I love that because, um, because I agree, and it's that's not an easy balance to maintain. That's not an easy uh, line to to walk because it is so easy to interact with people, and in the process of trying to answer the question, "How do I love this person?" Sometimes it's easy to end up in that place where we're sort of like mathematically weighing out right. their worth or something like that, and then trying to draw judgments from it and saying, "Oh, this person's not worth my energy or my effort or my time." or whatever because of, uh, and so it was just a good, it was a good challenge and a good reminder. And, um, yeah, I just liked the way that you presented it and the way that you stated it, especially during the season, right? The second week of Advent, it's Christmas time. The Christmas right. story is a story about love. The life That's of Jesus right. is a story about love. That's so. right. Yeah. I think one of the good things about having, you know, three people who preach or have preached regularly, um, is we get a chance to kind of see the nuts and bolts of a sermon and all those things. And so for me, I know why I pick certain quotes to be yeah. in my messages or why I go to certain passages as kind of ways to, to emphasize a point. So I kind of want to kind of get behind the scenes um, <laughs> in your, in pick your brain a little bit, Paul, because I know for me, and maybe this is true for you is when I include a quote from someone, it, the quote has impacted me right and to the point where I remember it or I go oh yeah there's this this thing that this one person said and I go back in my book and I see oh yeah I did highlight that or whatever so um so what stood out to you personally about that quote um and, and what made you then put it into your message this weekend well I, I I really like the quote simply because it uh we had this such a tendency to have an us versus them mentality mm. and um you know, and I just, I just really liked how he says that. You know, if we have experienced grace, uh, then we, the more that we have experienced grace, the less likely we will be able to say, "Oh, you know, that evil person there." Right. Mm -hmm. You know, because yeah. we, 
very much see uh, our world around the lens of 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 how horrible we are. Yeah. And um, and but that's not how God sees us. Mm -hmm. So we need to get our head wrapped around how God sees us first. Mm -hmm. And then once uh, once he shows us that. Uh, then we can start looking at other people in in a in a whole different light. Yeah. Um, but I just I loved how uh, he described that the more that we get into this, it's not about who we are or how we've lived our lives. It's about who God is and right. how He sees us. Right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So for me, the thing that stood out is your third point of God's love is standard setting, mm. um, and. You know, I think sometimes we talk about God's love and how, <clears throat> excuse me, God is loved so unconditionally. And, you know, we talk about, you know, looking at the four Greek words used in the New Testament and agape is the love of God, it's the self-sacrificing that I'm giving myself away. And I think right. sometimes we think, well, that is so pure, so lofty. There's no way I I can even begin to, to show this kind of love. And at some point that's true, but another point is, but that's still the standard. Right. Mm -hmm. And it, it goes... Um, beyond that quote you just mentioned of, you know, when you've been shown grace, you've only been shown grace because God loved you to show right. you grace. And so that is, should be the motivating factor. So for what stood out to me there is like, he is our, his love is our example to follow no matter what. And, and so yes, loving people is high and lofty. It's a, it's a hard thing to do. Yeah. But we, because we've been shown the love of God, we should do nothing but show that in return. And so, right. yeah, we'll never do it perfectly. And I loved how you said in your message, like, this isn't us on our uh, on our own, apart right. from God doing this. This is only accomplished through the Holy Spirit working in our lives, through God's right. power to help us to love. Um, but still, like, that's, that's the standard. And yeah. he set the standard first. And there's a clear picture on what that means to then replicate that standard mm -hmm. out right. in our world. So that's what stood out to me. Yeah. Yeah. And I like that point, Brandon, because it's a reminder that, you know, love is part of one of the fruits of the spirit, right? We just did our series on the yeah. Holy Ghost recently. And, and I got a chance to preach out of that passage in Galatians five and this reminder that the ability to love, the ability to, to, to sort of love according to the agape love of God is not like a, a requirement, a prerequisite to be accepted into his presence. It's a result of his work in our lives. It's not something that I can conjure up for myself. It has to be the result of him being in me and through and working through me and me spending mm -hmm. time being saturated in the Holy Spirit. It is not something that I generate from inside myself. It comes right. from him and then gets shared yeah. through me. And that's... Uh, and that's crucial. Right. So yeah, it's not something you can muster up. No, it definitely is not. Yeah. It definitely is not. So what was uh, challenging, Daniel? What, what challenging to me was, um, you know, Paul, what you referenced a couple of minutes ago, just the, the importance of having that experience of being loved by God. And it's so easy having been in the Christian faith, you know, for almost my entire life and having worked in ministry for so long, we use phrases like that. And we talk about that regularly, like, you know, know the love of God for yourself, have, have a, a regular experience of what it means to be loved by God. And sometimes it's really easy to use that terminology and talk about that kind of thing. But then to not go out and spend time in God's presence and have those experiences. Mm -hmm. And it struck me because especially the last two or three weeks or so, I've been dealing with some of my elements of depression a little bit. And that was one of the areas where I was being attacked by the enemy and lied to and, and kind of walking around with some of those feelings of like worthlessness and like, man, God, you know, I, I feel like you should have given up on me by now because I just can't get my stuff together and I can't right. get this or that done or whatever it is. And just this reminder that that is, you know, I'm being, I'm being lied to. I'm, yes. I'm being lied to and I'm not hearing the voice of God and hearing him speak into that space in me. And I'm not hearing him. I'm not having an experience of his love. I'm having an experience of something else in, right. in its place. Yes. And, and it was a good encouragement and a good reminder that I have got to sit down and get quiet and remove some of the distractions in my life. And every day find whether it takes five minutes or, you know, an hour, whatever it is, mm -hmm. and, and get into the presence of God and really spend some time in prayer and let him speak into that space in my life. Absolutely. I, I have found, uh, in my own life, you know, whenever I get a chance to speak, I, you know, I try to, you know, give people kind of a, a window into who I am because, you know, I'm speaking to myself just as much as of I'm course. speaking to anybody else. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, you know, the fact is, is that 
you know, I, myself, I'm like I said in my message, I am racked with insecurities. Yeah. Um, it, and we live in a world where it's so much easier to believe in the mm -hmm. in the negative stuff. Yeah. It's so much easier to to believe that you know I don't have anything to offer, right. or, you know. But that's not what God says about us. Right. He chose us, right? And so you know we get the opportunity. You know, one of the things your dad said a long time ago mm -hmm. uh, that really kind of you know rocked my world is when he said that uh, that God's uh, or that Jesus's chief uh, role here on earth when he was doing the ministry on earth that he was here to be an agreeer with the father mm -hmm. and that he handed that role over to us yeah. and i said well would that include what agreeing with him about what he says about us yeah and he said well i never thought about that but of course <laughs> yeah and you know even the more that i have looked at that you know it it's so difficult to lift that weight right mm -hmm. you know because we have a world that's conditioning us to believe the opposite right and I mean, it's almost, it, it's frustrating on a human level because, so all three of us, uh, you know, are dads, we've, we've had families, we've known kind of some of the elements of what it means. How many times in your life have you had the experience of talking to somebody, whether it was your wife or one of your kids or whatever, and trying to tell them how you felt about them and having them just not listen mm -hmm. and having them just being like, uh, you know, uh, yeah. Like I have one of those moments right. sometimes with my wife or whatever, where I'm like, I think you're gorgeous. I think you're amazing. I think you're the most incredible part of my life. And there's something inside of her that still says, no, you're only saying that because you're my husband and you have to say that. Yeah. Like you're, you're, <laughs> you're just paying lip service to the role because I'm here. And you know, of course, like anyway, it's, yeah. it's kind of played off lightheartedly, but that frustration of trying to communicate, no, this is my heart toward you, and yeah. I can't make you experience the depth of this feeling that I have, right. and yet here I am finding myself in the same place doing the same thing to God, right. mm -hmm. uh, of God trying to speak something like that to me, and I'm sitting here going, ah, yeah, God, but not really, right? Not You're just yeah. saying that because you have to or whatever, and somehow not having difficulty receiving. Right. And yeah. I find for myself that, you know, that's a prayer that I have to go to time and time again yeah. of, of, you know, God, what do you think of me? Because like I said, it's so much easier to get caught up in, in, uh, in the negativity right. um, that, you know, sometimes I, I need a little bit of a refresher that right. says, you know, do you really see, is this really who, how you see me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe the deal's off, you know, right. maybe I've screwed up so much that, right. that, you know, yeah. All of a sudden I'm I'm just terrible. Right. But you know, he doesn't disappoint. Yeah. Yeah. And he hasn't kicked me out of the family yet. So. That's right. Yeah. Brandon, yeah. what about you? What was the challenge for yeah. you? Yeah. For me it goes along the lines of what you guys are saying. You know, you think of the um the first point you said God's love is personal and I remember mm -hmm. how you I saw you pick someone out from each service and you took the time to say like, I love you. Like, you know, it's like, it's as if God is saying, I love you, Paul. Mm -hmm. I loved you before you were even, you know, a thought, Paul, before right. I even created everything. I knew I was going to create you and I, and I loved you then. Um, and then it's, it's from there. The application was to, like you guys have both said, to go and ask that prayer, God, like, what do you think of me or yeah. how do you see me? And I, the challenge for me in that is, is I think like what you guys have been saying, I got this image as you guys were talking of like, you know, we have this big mirror and we stand in front of it and like we usually always pick out the inadequacies or, or the failures, at least for me, I've been kind of on a journey of, of trying to, trying to lose some weight and I have lost a considerable amount of weight, but like every couple of weeks you look at yourself, like, okay, I look different. I look different, but you still like, but it's not there. It's not there. Right. Or, you know, like, and, and some of those things aren't bad if you're like literally trying to get a goal or a certain goal, but, but we, we do that. And we usually think that like, if we ask God that he's going to be that negative voice in the mirror right. or the negative reaction to what we right. see in the mirror, like you were saying, Paul is the world out there is it's always trying to tell you you're not enough. You're not good enough because now you need to buy our product or things right. like that. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes we put that onto God of like, if I ask for me, I think the challenging thing is, is like, I, I know he's going to say what he truly thinks about me, but like, what if he actually 
saw me the way I see myself mm-hmm. when I'm like low and when I'm when I've right. messed up or when like the right. the times I don't want to even look at myself. Yeah. Um, and it's that fear of like, well, he's going to be that voice in the mirror, that critical eye of, yeah, this isn't right. Um, yeah. That and so the challenging thing I think for me is to then to to do it sometimes to sit and do it and then when I do like realize like okay I got to go back to that yeah. I got to keep going back to what he says about me. Um, it's interesting because we didn't really talk about, um, we didn't, I, I don't think you and Sarah, our worship leader, got together and talked about what songs to sing, but, you know, she <laughs> sang the song of like, I am who you say I am, yeah. you know, and that was a point in your message. And, yeah. and like, you know, we talked about, um, you know, the other, the other song of how, how he, he loves, loves you know, yeah. and, and, and those kinds of things. It was just, you know, it seems like the whole, the whole thema- like the spirit was doing something in our, in our building of the service and all that, yeah. right. um, that was unplanned. Um, but, but yeah, the, so it's that who you say I am and I gotta, I gotta go back to that and remember that. And so the challenge is, all right, Lord, who do you say I am? And like, let that drive, um, like how I view myself yeah. then after. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. And it cool. ultimately affects how you view others. Yes, absolutely. Because then you're less critical when you're looking at other people because you realize I've, you know, this is what God said about me right. and I, and I've messed up, but you know, I, I need to learn to, to see them the way mm-hmm. God would see them. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So what, uh, one of the other questions we like to ask, and we like to turn it back to the person who, who had a chance to speak is if you had, um, you know, extra time, um, what would you have added to your message or, you know, was there something you maybe cut out to, to save time? And so where would you probably have, where would you have traced an idea a little bit further or is there something, you know, you would have added if you had the time? Oh gosh. Um, a Mr. Rogers quote, right? Yeah. Well, that's that's the reason why I added the the Brooks uh, the Phillips Brooks quote because I didn't want to go to Mr. Rogers again. <laughs> um, but I think that uh, you know I I'm a big proponent in trying to really make this uh, make uh, even Sundays uh, mm. you know something that's very rubber meets the road. Yeah. Um, you know of you know how is this affecting me. Yeah. And I think that, you know, as we move towards the, the life groups, I think that that's going to, you know, really give voice to that. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but, you know, I would like to flesh, I would like to have fleshed that out a little bit more with, with the folks of, you know, you know, just taking some, you know, even a, a couple of seconds and say, okay, you know, what, what would you love to hear? Right. Hmm. What would, what was, what is the thing that if you had any, any time at all to, to just, you know, really hear God's voice about you, what are the things that you would long to hear? Mm -hmm. Because I guarantee the things that you long to hear is the things that he's telling you already. Yeah. Mm. And, um, quote that, tweet that. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, we, we, you know, so just giving people that, that opportunity, Mm -hmm. um, like some space or maybe write it down or, yeah, just, you know, Mm -hmm. and, and share it with the person next, you know, it's, uh, and it's one thing to hear it, you know, but you know, just like, you know, the, the parable of the sower, Mm -hmm. you know, you know, it's, you hear those things and you go off. Well, that wasn't, that wasn't really, I didn't really hear God. Um, but, uh, Get you know then having the opportunity to to share that, you know mm-hmm. this is what I would love to hear. Does yeah. this bear witness to you? And so that you have someone that can hold you accountable. Mm-hmm. You know I heard someone say a long time ago that uh, um, a true friend is the person that knows the song, the words of the song of your heart, and mm-hmm. can sing it back to you when you've forgotten the words. Um, you know just having that friend that can say no. Remember this is what God said. This yeah. is what you would love to hear. That's that's God. You, that I bear witness to that in your life. Yeah, so. that's good. Because I've heard other quotes about friends that were not. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a good quote. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, hey, Pastor Paul, thanks for hashing out your you know sermon again, and mm-hmm. thanks for your insight and speaking about love. Um, as we transition to like the second part of our of our conversation today, I do want to ask a question. We last week we sh- we shared. Um, kind of a, some of our famous traditions from Christmas. And right before we got on and went live today, you kind of shared like a memory that you, that you liked about Christmas. I don't want to give it away, but would you be willing to share, um, the one about, you know, your kiddos? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. Share uh, something about Christmas that, that brings back a smile. Or yeah. My, uh, you know, 
We have uh, in in my family. We we've we have always uh, were very truthful to the kids about Christmas and and um, and but we we set everything up. Sure, you know, mm. and um, you know so. Every year, of course, you know, I get up early, turn all the lights on. So it's all, you know, this magical presence and, and, um, and the kids would, would wake up at, oh my Lord, it's, it's really, really <laughs> early and they'd come in and get us up. And uh -huh. one year, uh, Carol and I were really excited about the things that we had gotten <laughs> for them and gotten each other. And so we, we actually woke up before the kids did. Uh -huh. And, um, so I was like, well, do we just lay here and just, <laughs> you know, pretend to be asleep? And he says, no, I want to go and open presents. <laughs> so, so we we barged into the girls' ah, room. I love it. <laughs> and we we was like jumping on their beds and saying, girls, girls, Santa came, Santa came. <laughs> and is there are presents all over the place. We got to go out there. Uh, and so <laughs> they're like, oh, dad, it's so early. No, 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 it's here. <laughs> so that was, that was a fun day. Turnabout is fair play. That's right. So, That's right. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that. Yeah, I'm at, we're at the age where like, um, the boys wake up really early and like wake uh, us up uh -huh. and, um, you have to kind of uh, wake up. Well, one year we, I remember kind of doing something similar to that where I, I had everything ready and we had to like wake up, um, Liam cause he was kind of dragging, but no, this year I, I can expect similar, similar to, uh, well not, well opposite of your story, but jumping on us and going, get up, get up. But, yeah. Oh, dark 30 or whenever it happens. Yeah. Yeah. It's fun. I, I'm like you. I like giving, like giving the gifts and I love like. I, I want you to have it. In fact, I'm really bad at giving gifts. I'm like, hey, Sam, why don't you open this up? She's like, Christmas is three weeks away. I'm like, yeah, but I got it for you. I want to see the joy on your face. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> so we wanted to uh, keep it lighthearted today, and we've we've done this in the past, but we're going to do a quiz, um, uh, another BuzzFeed quiz. Mm -hmm. And um, Paul is a Gen X um, pastor here. Not the pastor of Gen I'm X, old, but you are in Gen X. I'm the oldest X. person here. <laughs> At the table. You're but, the oldest person at the table today, yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. um, and depending on where you define the lines, uh, Daniel's a millennial and I'm, I am a millennial. Yeah, so I'm, I'm right on the line between Gen X and millennial. So, so. you, so you, I don't know. The, we'll the, the title of the quiz is only millennials will be able to identify 15 out of 22 of these brand logos that no longer exist or are completely different. So mm -hmm. are you ready to see if... Um, you're smart as a millennial, or whatever that means. <laughs> I'm all, all right. about pop culture. All right. I don't know if we can even get like a um, close we up. Probably, maybe not. We probably can't. We'll give. Uh, Pastor Tony is doing our production today. So He's waving right now. We're going to see if. If you can see it, that everybody's going to wind up being sick to their stomach. I was stomach. just going to say that camera's having a little bit of an epileptic fit here. So. <laughs> all right. Uh, that should be good. We'll keep that there. All right. Um, so, can, an alphabet back. Do you know what this logo is for? Is it PBS Kids, Nickelodeon, oh, Disney, or Boomerang? Oh, this is going to be that's, way easier uh, if it's multiple uh, choice. Uh, you want me to answer? Yeah. That's Nickelodeon. Yeah. Nickelodeon. It is Nickelodeon. That's what I would have said, too. Mm -hmm. Correct. It's the old Nickelodeon logo. I think we'll just have to we'll just have to go back. Thank you, Pastor Tony, because <laughs> it's going to go in and out. If you're at home. Oh, here's a, what is this logo for? It's a, it's a picture of an earth. And it's got um, it's got buildings on the top, and it's got blue splashes all around. Is this CNN, BBC, Comedy Central, or the Cartoon Network? You know what I'm <laughs> Tony, from the back of the auditorium, the back. with no visual on the picture whatsoever. I think it's Comedy Central. I think it's Comedy Central. Correct. Yeah. Good job. It's the old Comedy Central logo. Here's another one. All right, it's a bunch of gray boxes, and it's got an elephant. With its trunk up in the air, pointing at a globe, kind of looking up toward a globe. Is this the logo for the Discovery Channel, TLC, Animal Planet, or Court TV? I really want to say Court TV, but uh, it's it's either Animal Planet or Discovery. It's right? Animal Planet. Is it Animal Planet? Let's go with that. Correct. Nice, good job, Paul. So only a millennials. He he can only get like two more of these, and then he he. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he raised money. There you go. That's right. So what is oh, this the logo one's... for? Oh, that's not even fair. <laughs> Qdoba, Menchie's, Taco Bell, or Chipotle? I want to remind you, if you're out there, it's a yellow bell with a maroon uh, uh, arc behind it and an orange stripe. What is it? 
Well, it's Taco Bell. Taco Bell. The happiest place on earth. Yes. Wow, that's right. I remember that one. That was the logo when I was growing up. Yeah. The old school bell. Okay, it what? wasn't the logo when I was growing up. <laughs> what is this the logo for? Oh, oh, oh I messed it up. I oh, skipped it. Okay, this is an interesting one. What is the, lo the logo for this? Here's a soda can. You see the word cherry. Oh, I think I know what this is. And then we see... A, though they covered it, but they, they redacted they, they the redacted rest of it. The, yeah. yeah, it's a black and red can. Well, red with a kind of black stripes. It's a very sort of like wild and extreme looking. Extreme can. font cherry. Yeah. So is it cherry Sprite, cherry Pepsi, cherry Coke, <laughs> or have cherry they, Phlegm? Have, <laughs> cherry Phlegm? What? <laughs> yeah. Have I, I know what it is. Sprite? I know what it is. Uh, if cherry Sprite was a real thing, I would drink that all day long. That's that's cherry Coke. I was saying cherry Coke. Cherry Coke. That's what I'm going with. Yeah, yeah, correct. Right. yeah. You're that sprite. I want for. cherry sprite to be a real it's, thing. It's a it it's a can yeah. again, but there's a it's like a a light blue looks like soda with bubbles, you know, effervescence. The red is a diet kind of like a mm -hmm. cursive type font. But again, they've cut off most of the can. Yeah, is it Diet Coke, Diet Fanta, Diet Blue, or Diet Pepsi? I think that's the old Diet Pepsi logo. I think isn't it, it is. You think it's the old Diet Pepsi? Yeah. I think so. Correct. Man, yeah. we're, we're crushing. We yeah. are. Killing that. We are doing very... I can't tell if that makes us good millennials or bad Oh, millennials. I remember this no, one. Exactly. Oh, what is this the logo this? for? Um, is it Touchstone Pictures, DreamWorks, MGM, or Lightspeed? That is definitely Touchstone Pictures. Is it? Okay. Yeah. This one I didn't it's a, know. It's a blue circle with a yellow lightning bolt. And in fact, uh, it was owned by Disney. Touchstone oh, Films. That's and right. the uh, the upper f yellow flash is actually Dis Dis or Mickey's head stretched out. Really? Yep. Only uh, a Mickey aficionado would know yeah. that. And that's what we got here with us. Oh, you better know that one. What's yeah, this logo piece for? Piece of cake. That is the PlayStation <laughs> logo. Right I, was, I was going to defer to you. It's not portable mushroom? It is not. No. PlayStation. Uh, PlayStation. Yep. What is this? Oh, I remember this. What is this logo for? Oh, Gateway, Dell, Microsoft, or Edible Arrangements? Gateway. Mm -hmm. Edible Arrangements. <laughs> it's a edible box. It's a 3D the classic box computer with a company. Blue, a cow, cow print on 3D That's Gateway, box. isn't it? Gateway. Yeah, it's definitely. Gateway. Yeah. Ruth Kuehl's favorite. There you go. <laughs> computer. Whether she knows it or not. Yeah. Oh, what was this the logo for? It's kind of a red, and a red looks like a, an no, adult holding a little blue one. kid's yeah. hand. It's Nick Jr., yeah. Yeah, it's like Gumby figures. Nick uh, Jr. An adult yeah, Gumby. I'm like beating this thing into submission. Yeah. You are. Ooh. Ooh this what is, is this one. logo for? Verizon, Sprint, AT&T, or Bell South? Ooh, that's tough. I think that's Sprint, but I don't know. It's okay. So for you at home, it's like a red diamond in the background. And then over the top, there's one, two, three, four red stripes. Horizontal and in between red the red stripes. stripes is a white, a white line. Yeah. I would go with Sprint. I think you going with Sprint? Sprint's old logo, yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yes. It wasn't now. It's yellow. yellow. Oh, I don't even know. Because yeah. aren't they owned by somebody else now? If they're out they, of business now. Tony yeah. knows what they are because he... <laughs> He's not saying That's anything. where he has his... What is uh, Sprint? Sprint. The are they yellow company. right now? Is it... Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. So what is this the logo for? <laughs> it's uh, an old school TV, but is this for Nick at Night? Apple TV, YouTube, or Netflix? Yeah, that, is that the old YouTube logo? I think it is, yeah. I don't know this one. Well, it's a tube. Oh, the old man, tube man, when TV. was that? It's now oh. the emoji, right? It's now a, a yeah. TV, old TV emoji. It's crazy. Huh. What is this logo for? It's oh, a check, half of a checkered flag. Oh, this I know one this I know. one, too. Is it CMT, Cartoon Network, Cartoon Spike Network? TV, or TNT? It's Cartoon Network. Yeah, it's the Toon mm -hmm. Toon. Uh, yep. Oh, <laughs> what is this logo any, for? Any self-respecting Oregonian <laughs> should know this one. We have the I last have, one. Yeah, the last here. one's in Bend, in right? Bend. Yeah. That's right. It's Airbnb. Uh -huh. You can rent it out for the night. Yep. yep. Yeah. It's a it's a blue movie ticket on the uh, outside yep. of a building. Yellow With the border. The yellow border. It. It's ripped out like mm -hmm. a ripped ticket. Yep. It's Definitely a blockbuster. Defunct, uh, I worked at Blockbuster Video. Did you, did you really? really? I did. Yeah. That was a. Uh, I don't. Think, no, it was beyond VHS. So I didn't have to rewind anything, but we did sell a lot of old VHSs. Yeah. Oh, I know this oh, one. this one, yeah. So this is a, kind of a teal blue, aqua blue circle, and then there's a big white N, and there's a, half the circle is black on the bottom. The other half is a, the, like a darker teal blue, aqua blue. One of the OG. This is Net Internet Zero, Netflix, providers. Netscape, or Netizens. I think it's Netscape, isn't it? I was going to go with Netscape myself. Well, I'll be different. I'll say net zero. 
Do I it. don't know. Oh, oh. It's Netscape. They're Netscape. Right. I think that was the very first internet mm-hmm. that I used when I was in middle school, like yeah. in a classroom. On the old dial-up. So yep. because I said so I'm crushing real. this, all of a sudden I'm doing terrible. Yeah. Okay, you have to know what this one is. It's three parallelograms angled to the right, and underneath it, it says Superstation. It's still part of their uh, uh, television TBS. network. It's probably it's TBS. TBS yeah. CBS, TBS, BJS, or ABC. I think it's TBS. <laughs> TBS, yes. Yeah, they're the Superstation. There we go. Wrestling used to be on TBS on Saturday. Oh, nice. TNT was Monday Night Raw. All right, Nitro. Sorry. Just it. <laughs> oh, this one. If you watch the Ninja Turtles, yeah. you know what this is. Uh-huh. It's an old film reel, and they have one of the right side is angled. Angled. Yeah. So is this New Gate Cinema, New Line Cinema, New Film Cinema, or New Mind Cinema? It is New Line. New Line. New line. If I remember oh, yeah. right, that's the same production company that did Lord of the Rings, too. So, I, just rem- I remember I so. like the beginning of the the, the live action Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It's definitely Ninja Turtles. You hear yes. all the music. Do, 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 uh-huh. the yeah, that's cool. Ooh, what is the logo for this? Now this looks like you're in a theater. It's all black and then shooting up in like a purple, deep blue. Of, yeah, you see like it's showing on the film. So is it Grace Film, Lacey Films, Macy Films, or Brace Me Films? I think it's Gracie Films. I actually don't know. I don't know this. I one think either. it's I'm not Gracie. Sure if films. I know this one. Gracie Films. We'll go with correct. That. Cool. Tony, you're a film guy. What what movies are Gracie films? I never heard of Gracie films. Okay. Okay. So right. he has never heard of Gracie films. So This was also in the Ninja Turtles movies. Oh, yeah. It's the logo for F H E and it's like looks like like a little kid's coloring book. Yeah, writing. like a line where you would draw with a dash Practice line in the middle. Letters. Practice letters. Mm-hmm. Liam uses that in first grade. F H E. I think that's family home entertainment. Yeah, it's Finding Home Entertainment, For Home Entertainment, Family Home. I think you're right. Fearing Him Entertainment, <laughs> Christian organization. <laughs> so I kick my cup down. Uh-huh. Ooh. Oh. Simpsons. Oh, Gracie Films is The Simpsons, oh, Simpsons. I've just been told. Okay. So. What is this the logo for? I know this. Is this Ames, Verizon, Kmart, or Circuit City? That's Circuit City. It does look like a Circuit it City. It is. Yeah. Circuit City. Are what they Best Buy now? They, no, they I don't think they became. I, yeah, we used to have a Circuit City over by Gateway Mall where the Walmart is now, yeah. but they went out of business quite a few years ago. The girls and I camped out there one night to on Black Friday trying to get iPods. Oh. iPods? Yeah. Nice. Old school. Yeah. And that right there is an antiquated statement. Yes, it is an antiquated statement. Well, an iPod's still a killer. <laughs> killer cool. Oh, this one. It's a uh, orange lightning oh, bolt. That in is. front is a white box with delicious. Know. I could go for a yes, bottle Propel, of this. Propel, right Gatorade, now. Powerade, or Limeade. That's the Gatorade. That's Gatorade. Gatorade. I haven't changed very much. No. Hey, you got twenty out of twenty-two. Well, really, you got twenty-one out of twenty-two because I actually, you know, hit one of them earlier. I don't even know if I would have got it, but you know what? Well done, Paul. Not only millennials well, are not the only ones effort. who will be able to get all those right. So <laughs> you did a good job. We've <laughs> defied the odds. Look at us go. We are legion. <laughs> so. so, Paul, what was one of the Bible verses that you uh, shared this weekend that you would probably want us to finish with as we're reading? We oh, like to read I know it. which one he wants to do. Romans 12, 1 and 2. Romans 12, 1 and 2. Yeah. yeah. Out of what translation? New Living Translation. Definitely. Oh, that's what I have right here. Cool. <laughs> All right. Would you want to read it for us? I can certainly read it for us. All right. So, Pastor Paul is going to finish with Romans 12, 1 and 2 to end the day for us today. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because all of he, all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Amen. 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 Well, thank you everybody for joining in with us. Um, we want to invite you out to our Christmas Eve candlelight service. If you have plans, don't have plans for Christmas Eve, come even on out. You, even if you, if do, you do, cancel your plans. <laughs> or make it a part Christmas of it. Christmas Eve service instead. We've been talking so. about traditions. Make it yeah. a part of a Christmas Eve tradition. Come and go. do a candlelight service and then go home and have yourself some... Yuletide cheer. I don't know what else. To have. <laughs> Eggnog. Have you know? My family tradition on Christmas Eve night after the services is lamb stew. Mm. Oh, yeah. I don't think we, we usually give that. pajamas at some point. Mm. So yeah, get yourself in some pajamas. Have some 
Lambs do. <laughs> Watch a Christmas movie. There you go. Yeah. All Have right. a good week, everybody. Bye. <laughs>